Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I wish that you are enjoying your life and your days and your job and wherever you are, whenever you are. Today we are going to talk about a very important subject affecting charitable organization. And as you can see, the title is a little bit aggressive, but let me reassure you that I am not against any, any, any religious individual to be a part of any charitable organization. I'm not against any religious group, but I'm against the lack of transparency and the control freak to some of those who are trying to do from within the humanitarian and social sector. So to be very honest, it's transparency that we are uh, suffering from or lack of transparency that we are suffering from. First of all, let me thank my two colleagues who are helping me, Ahmed Sheikh and uh, Ali Shawa. And you might ask a question, what is that to do with this image in front of you about the Sudan flooding where, uh, where this young man was carrying his daughter on his shoulder and you have seen this before. I'm just keep repeating it to go back to Sudan because of the number of affected people are more than 800,000 people. The number of destroyed houses are nearly 120,000 houses or more. And there's no mainstream media within the Muslim countries generally or other countries are covering Sudan. And everybody else is very interested in politics and political maneuvering in different parts of the world. So I'm just trying to highlight the need of Sudan, Sudanese people to have the help. Please, to everyone, do not forget Sudan. Let's go. Uh, this is the uh, pyramid or the triangle which I'm going to talk about later on. The more dark the color of the level of the triangle, the more serious it is. The less darker, the better situation it becomes. The more greener, the perfect situation will be. Clear? I'm not going to talk about it now, but I'm going to talk about it in the discussion. The more darker to the black is more serious, black and red are more serious. The more lighter or less darker become better and the greener is the best and perfect. Next, please. It, uh, the social, humanitarian and the developmental work is like a pyramid, like a pyramid. The pyramid has a base which creates or to constitute the foundation and each pyramid has three or four faces, three or four faces. That's why I'm getting you this section inside one of the pyramids and behind such a section, it are the pyramids in uh, Egypt as you can see it behind beautiful scenery with the camels and the others. So what is the basis of this pyramid, the humanitarian pyramid is the poor. The base is the poor, displaced, refugees, widows and orphans. They are the solid foundation of our organizations. They are the cementing power of keeping the pyramid together, together without the poor, the elderly, the sick, the displaced, the refugees, we have no pyramid. We have no pyramid, we have no organization. I hope it's clear. On the other side of the slide, you can see this lady who is in a wheelchair because she has paralysis in both legs. She is one of the victims in Sudan, in one of the outskirts of Khartoum, in one of the villages outside Khartoum. My colleague, Dr. Mustafa Said, who is the Secretary General of the Royal Organization from Bahrain, was visiting last week. And they found her sitting on the wheelchair in dignity, in dignity, in dignity. So it attracted him to go and have a discussion with her. 
When you want to talk to her, her name is Abir or was Abir. And you asked her about what is this? How do you feel? She said, I was in my house with my father and my mother. And the flooding reached the house, destroyed the whole walls, and we were covered by water. I could not be able to leave the house before saving my two, my parents, my father and my mother. So a wheelchair woman in the middle of the flooding, trying to save her father and her mother. That's why I'm saying the base, the foundation of the pyramid is the poor, displaced, refugees, widows, orphans, and, 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 and. Without them, we are nowhere. We cannot go anywhere. Next, please. As I said, each pyramid in our social pyramid or humanitarian pyramid or developmental pyramid have got four faces, four faces. Two are visible to the public. They can see it 24 seven and two are not visible because not, not because they don't want to become visible because the role is not to the public. Phase one is visible face, which is what is that? The aims, the ideas, the values, the message, the mission of the organization, then the performance, the services, the reputation, spreading of the organization on the national and the international level, the history of the organization, the partnership it has with others, advocacy, empowering local organization, capacity building and program and workshops, future leader program, leadership amongst young women and men, empowering diaspora communities and others. All these, all these, all these activities can be seen by everybody outside. So this is one of the visible faces of the pyramids as you can see it in front of you. Next, please. One of the invisible faces of the pyramid is the trustees, not because they are hiding themselves, but because they are not engaged with the community. So the public might not know about them, but public might not know their names and their backgrounds, okay? But they are the, they are the legal individual, the, the individual are responsible for the organization before the government. This is invisible, but not hiding. The third phase, which is another visible phase, is the executives. Employees, like uh, the fundraisers, like the media, like the uh, chief executives, like department uh, managers, like, like all this. They interact every day with the public, with the donors, with the, this, with the, with the affected community and others. So this is a second visible face that the public can see from the organization. Next, please. Face number four is invisible again. It's not to hide, but it's there because you do not ask for it. What is this second invisible face of the pyramid is in, which is the organization, the internal structure, the policies and procedures, rules and regulation, defined authorities and responsibilities, budgeting, internal, external auditing, accountability and quality control, evaluation and the impact measurements. That's what I'm saying two visible faces and two invisible faces. We need the four. We need the four, definitely we need the four. But before having these four faces for the organization, the foundation is the poor, is the widow, is the orphan, is the displaced and refugees who are the real owner of the organization who are paying the salaries of every individual working in the organization. Next, please. As I was talking about the four faces, I said a visible face dealing with the society at all time, executives, the project, you can see them, community service and other. I mentioned this before. The second one, second one, second one, second slide. Hello. The invisible face, which are the trustees, board of directors, 
they have the power, but they don't have the knowledge and the experience. Plus the policy procedure, as, 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 as I mentioned. So two visible faces and two invisible faces. We need the four. We need the four. We need the four. Okay. Next, please. So I'm going to talk only about one invisible face. Who should be the trustee? Who should not become a trustee? Why the dangers is coming to us from the trustees and the board members, okay? You can see the different coloring, which I put in this triangle. I call it Bermuda Triangle or Bermuda Triangle. All of you or most of you know that Bermuda Triangle is in the Atlantic Ocean, not far from the States. And it is very, very destruct dis destructive. If a ship by mistake went through it, it will never come out. And if a plane by mistake went to the, uh, the, 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 around the atmosphere or the sky of it, it will actually fall down in the Bermuda. So that's why I call this one Bermuda triangle. The bottom four are the most difficult ones. Let me say it again. I am not against the security or the military or the intelligence having their own humanitarian organization, but they have to declare it. I'm against that if they put their personnel inside the humanitarian organization and social organization to control it. No, no, no. The same with the religious groups. I am not against any religious groups. Could it be Christian, could it be Jewish, could it be Rastafaria, could it be Hindu, could it be Sikh, could it be whatever you call it. Declare it. I have no problem with this. But don't send your member of the organization to control other organizations. Against this. Armed groups, somebody asked me who are the armed groups. Armed groups are different to the terrorist group. Terrorist groups are people Yes, the armed group claim that they are trying to liberate their country from foreign powers. But the terrorist group even killing, killing for earning, killing for earning, killing for earning. It needs a lot of discussion. I am, let me say it again. I'm not against that security, military, intelligence, or religious group have their own organizations. They have to declare it. I'm against if the, the, those organizations who send or impose their people inside other organizations to control them. You see, to control them, no way. Okay. Let me take you in a journey through my life, which talk about nearly, nearly 40 years of my life in this uh, work. Why should I stay in a board for 30 years or 20 years or 25 years or more? I've been to countries where I found member of the board or chair of the board are there for 20, 30 years. Why? There's no other people to be a member of the board. Why is it? See, let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. Humanitarian and social development work is not, is not a priesthood system. It is not a priesthood state. Forever we live, forever we die. No way. It's not papacy, babawiya al arabiya in Arabic language. It's not papal state. It's not papal infallibility. As I say it, because I've seen people staying for 30 years. Why? Why should you stay for 30 years doing what? We respect you because you started with us. You've done your duty. Thank you very much. Get the second generation. Get the third generation. Get the fourth generation. Not you. You must not be eligible to carry on. Because I'm, 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 I met some of those people in different countries.
if those people do not realize that we are living at the moment, as I speak, in a very unjust world, I'm not saying for it's saying that you leave the board now that you are a bad man, no, or a bad woman. I'm saying that we are living in a very unjust world, and we have, we have, we have to realize what's happening around us in the surrounding. Let me tell you what some of those board members in some countries have done. In one of the countries, it was supported by another country, okay, the organization. Once upon a time, one of the sheikhs or one of the imams stood up to curse the donor country, which was actually supporting uh, orphans, widows, and other projects. Of course, the embassy of such a donor country was very unhappy. They stopped the funding. And when the people went to ask the sheikh or the imam or the board member said, Allah give the risk. Allah give the risk. It's not them who don't want it. Allah said also, be wise. Be wise. Use the logic. And then be relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It stopped, unfortunately. I give you another example of such individual who are still thinking that because of them, the organization is surviving. If they leave, the organization will lose its values, will lose its morality, will lose its credibility, will lose its integrity. Another individual in a, a member of the General Assembly, which meets once uh, every two years for two, three hours or four hours maximum. His organization found that all the banks are refusing or closing its bank account or its dealing with this organization. Because the bank nowadays, the banking nowadays, they, they close your bank account without telling you why. This is their authority, unfortunately. The last bank, which was the only one to keep it is, the bank account is open, they went to him, and there was a good relationship between the CEO or the uh, executive uh, officer and the bank manager. And they told him, on the terrorist list, there's one individual. Since he is there, we cannot deal with you. They went to such an individual, he's very nice and decent man, to explain to him. He said, no way. They told him the money is not going to reach the poor people. And we know we're not discrediting you. What we're saying, we're living in an unjust world. And it is the only bank which can transfer money to us. But he refused. He utterly refused. He utterly refused, unfortunately. Other board members, they under the slogan of my personal freedom, you know what they do? They swear against different religion. They swear against individuals. They swear politically against governments. And they put some in in non-humanitarian statement on their Facebook. And people sometimes, when they close their social media platform, they think it's done, finished. No. You have a profile. Your profile has been made already over the last 10 years, whether you close your bank, uh, uh, social media now, platform or not. And for myself, I have a profile. They know me inside out. If I change my skin, they suspect me. You got it? And sometimes with the technology, they can go through your closed social media platform and get the old statements. But people argue, it's my right. Yes, if you, it's your right, but it's not your right when you are responsible for an organization to tarnish the organization with you. Because in humanitarian atmosphere or humanitarian sphere, there's something called humanitarian principles, non-political, non-political, non-political. And you can keep arguing about what political and what non-political. Okay? This is another example, clear examples. Or the same individual in the board, 
in these four categories, which is the bottom four, will be a member of the board or member of a general assembly on one side and the member of political and executive member of a political organization. Of course, such government will make the link between the political, so structure or jama'ah or whatever it is, and the humanitarian organization. People are not stupid anymore. People are trying to dissociate themselves from this activity. If you are an executive member here in one of the political uh, religious groups and uh, you are a member of the, uh, the board or member of the general assembly, that means that any government will make the link. Will make the link. And people refuse to leave till they'll be told to leave or the organization will be closed down. If you want to have your personal freedom, have it, but don't become responsible for society, for organization, for institution, because you will bring this organization, institution, and society, uh, you will raise it to the ground. When we discuss all these sort of things with them, you know what we remember in the good old days, a movie called Samson. You know, the strong man who got all his strength in the hair that he has, and then he destroyed the temple on his head and on the head of everybody in the area. My way or the highway? It's a philosophy. We know it. No, it's not your way because the organization does not belong to you. The organization does not belong to your political party or to your jama'ah or to your group. No, it belongs to the society the community who are paying the money to invest their money and their life to make you functioning. It is the organization of the poor, not of any one of you. So coming back, we are not in a priesthood philosophy of thinking, or we are not in a priestly state or papal state. No, 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 no. Other examples which I will keep traveling from a different country to another country, uh, civil society organization, charitable organization, humanitarian organization, started by an individual, very reputable individual, but he brought all his children, daughters and sons, to be board members. So it becomes like a family business. It becomes like a family business. This is not right. Absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. So I focus, I'm, I'm focusing on the bottom four. You can have your own religious organization to have its own humanitarian and social development. Even the military or the security or the intelligence can have the same, but you have to declare it, but you don't have the right to go and be in control of other organizations from the back doors. If you go to the red, which is the warlords and the merchants, absolutely don't allow them to come closer to your organization, no matter how much they have, no matter how much money they have, no way. They are closer, if not, to the criminality itself, warlords who make their money thriving from the blood of the killed or displaced people and refugees. No, no way. Can you bring the pyramid back? No way, warlords, no way, don't ever. And keep searching, keep searching on the history of any individual who is coming to you as a board member, as a board of trustees member. Political parties, yes, in the red as well. Or the government sometimes chooses individuals to want to introduce them, to let them to be a part of the board of directors or board of trustees. That, that's what happened to me one day in 1998 in one country when I went there I was trying to register the organization. The authority told me, you can recommend some names, said not any. Treat us like you treat. The Americans and the European, because we are European, we have the right to choose our board members and our representatives. If you are going to
to deal with that in this way, we are going to, because the world is full of poverty and millions and millions and millions of poor people need our fund. So when the government imposes on you, individuals mean that they are trying to control you. When the government imposes on you a general or uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, general from the army or uh, uh, I can't remember the other, uh, colonel or whatever it is, know that this is absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong because it's called non-government organization. It's called humanitarian organization. It's not government organization. The government has its right to make and build its own organization. To put whatever it is inside it. So the political party are trying to maneuver to control your organization from the back door or the government imposing individuals to be a board members. Wrong. Next to that are the corrupt individual, businessmen and women. Really, I'm very sick of them. Very dubious. The way you, they make money. We saw what happening here and there or selling or bribing or this kind of uh, illegal a legal relationship between them and uh, the bad government officers they bring, uh, used to bring to us out of date food material and medical medical material and the others and they make a lot of money and they come now they want to clean their face to start or to join you don't let them to join you because they are not credible they are not integral be careful don't be distracted by their money because their money is being earned in a non-halal way. What do you mean by gangism? Gangism. Gangism. Gangism and grouping. A minister visited us nearly less than 20 years ago. And I was in my room as a CEO. And uh, with me was uh, two of the trustees, a good old friend of mine. He told me, you know what she told me? This is more than 18 years ago. You bring your friend. They don't represent the community. They are your friends, your school friend, your, your, your university friends. It could be good at the very beginning to put somebody that you know and trust. But when the organization becomes 20 years old or 30 years old or 25 years old, you don't have the right to keep your friends as a gang. We call it gangism. We're going to the less difficult ones, like actually, if we're on the national level, have only one clan, one school of thoughts, one race, and we actually talking about that we represent the country, not where, no, 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 not anywhere, not anywhere, no, no, you can't. Because if you are in a multicultural society, multicultural country, multi-faith, multi, 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 you have to represent the society and the nation and the people inside your organization. If you are working on the international level and you are in Europe, which is most of the community of the Muslims and the Arabs are there from different backgrounds. You don't make it, you, you talk about it is, an international organization, but only Pakistani are running it, but only Indian are running it, but only Sufi are running it, but only Jamaat Islami are running it. It has to be diverse. It has to be diverse. It has to be diverse. When you can bring the Pakistani, the Indian, the Bangladeshi, the Sufi, the Jamaat Islami, the Al Hadith, and everybody according or based on their merit and based or credibility and based on the professionals, not based on the gangism. The top, or the next top, which is the family, which is the foundation. I give an example happened to one in one of the countries where it has INGO, International Non-Government Organization, as well as foundations. In this country, after pressure come on it from the international community because of the funding and the money laundering global impact, they found that the foundation, what do you mean by foundation? Foundation is a family organization. 
does not raise fund from the public, but spend the fund from their own money. And if I have got Hani's foundation, Hani's family would put the money inside the organization, so or the foundation, so I spend only on my money, but I don't have the right to raise fund from the society. And this is different to the other civil society organization. In this country, they had a lot of problems from such foundation. They have to change their policy against them and let them to look to work locally and let only one or two organizations to work on an international level, to be representing the country on an international level. It's where I will manipulate our relationship with the government and mix the cards together. The best, which is the, the top green, which is to represent the community, the society, the, the, all the different uh, component of the society in the country. So the bottom four are very dangerous. In spite of the fact, I respect every religious individual. I respect every religious group, but don't infiltrate to control. And if anybody would like from these four, bottom four groups, to do to, to, to organize their organization, they can do that. I am not sure if the armed groups or the terrorist organization will be able to have organization. I'm again it's dealing with them all together. But I have to put them where they are the component of society, and sometimes through their individuals, they can go to control the organization in the society. Next, please. Why this pyramid at this particular time? You know why? Many humanitarian disasters, many armed conflicts happening here and there, many millions of displaced people and refugees, less funding, less funding, many, 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 or much, much, much negative impact of climate change which leads to all the flooding, as you can see it nowadays, in East Africa, West Africa, Pakistan, Afghanistan, everywhere, climate change. So because of the rising number of armed conflicts and natural disasters, the rising number of internally displaced people and refugees, lack of funding and negative impact of climate change. And more, and more, next please. And more, next please. No, the one before that. The one before that. The presence of many terrorist groups and organizations. You know what? Let us be very frank. Who is funding them? Groups, other groups, other institutions, could be other governments. And everybody knows who is funding X, Y, Z terrorist group. But we keep quiet. The presence of those group, how do they get their funding? How do they get their equipment coming from the engines in the sky to get the four-wheel drive uh, Toyota and the others down brand new from where? Dubious ways of funding. War and terror and war and Islamophobia. And, and this is actually led to the restricting, restricting active social and humanitarian workers from performing their duties, restricting or decreasing or diminishing the civil liberty space, unfortunately. Mostly affecting the majority of people affected are the Muslim charities. Money transfers I mentioned before in some of these examples, these are clear case studies, which I mentioned, clear case studies, clear, and we're living it, but people don't want to move out. As I said earlier, we are living in an unjust world. But we have to realize that the existence of the organization is more important than the existence of the individual himself or herself inside the organization. Number eight, actually, I mentioned it, the shrinking of the civil liberty space, and I think about actually listing of people, all these sort of things is happening. If, if somebody puts your name on a list, 
the incentive done. You don't know. In this one organization, there are more than three million people on their uh, terrorist list. Most of those people do not know that they are there, and most of them from a certain background, which is Muslim background. It becomes very clear that the people who have the authority and power having less knowledge and the experience of the organization's work. I'm not trying to insult the board members, but I'm saying that the people who have the knowledge, the memory are the executives in the organization. And the people who make the decision are the people who have no knowledge or less knowledge in the organization. Next, please. After talking all this, you can say all this headache. This is go forward. What's the way forward? What's the solution? Two step solution. First, empowering factors. Second, is stabilizing factors. Four empowering factors. Four empowering factors. Number one, we must confess and determine that the intellectual and the organizational ownership belongs to whom? To the poor, to the displaced, to the refugees, to the sick, to the elderly, not to me, not to my family, not to my jama'a, not to my political party, nothing. To the society on behalf of the poor. Those are the, having the intellectual and organizational ownership. It's not me, even if I'm the founder, even if I'm the chair of the, of the board or chair of the CEO of the organization, even if I'm the donor. It is the poor organization. It is them make the foundation to make them actually cementing the four faces of the organization. Number one, having proper effective succession plan. If you come and tell me that you did not have, then people are not trained yet. What are you doing the last 30 years in the organization? What are you doing the last 20 years in the organization? What are you doing the last 10 years in the organization? You as a woman or you as a man, what are you doing? If you fail to train, to empower, to educate young people, to shadow you, to take your role from you, you are not a leader, you are a failure, whether you are a woman or you are a man. Having a proper and effective succession plans for changing the organization leadership. It's number two. Number three, where are the, the young people representation in the organization? Where are the women's representation in the organization? Where are they? They are constitute more than 70% of the society, young people and women, but they're not there. We are a masculine, we are a unisex organization, unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately. It's not there. We don't want to put them on a board or in a structure just for a, for an image or for a Photoshop. Number four, which is very difficult to do and you have to fight out in a very revolutionary way. I had the discussion with one of my colleagues who I got to, uh, behind him 25 to 30 years of experience is can we, if not shall we, if not we will, make representing uh, board members representing the executives. You know why? Because the executives quite often come to the meeting very shy and very scared from the board, scared for their uh, job or their promotion or a stupid question that board members will ask them. But my discussion was my colleague based on how can we empower the executives and make them board members to have effective voice representing the executive personal, personal in the organization. So on one side, you have the young people. On another side, you have the woman. On the third side, you have the uh, executives. And on the fourth side, you have the elderly, which you have. Watch all the time that the average age of our organization is between 65 and 70. Why? 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 
This is the empowering factors, okay, which is revolutionary factors, succession plan, ownership, young people, and women in the in the trusteeship and representing executives to be represented in the uh, board of directors. Next, please. The stabilizing factors are another five. One of them establishing the rule of organizational independence. Organization has to be independent from any tail end. Any tail end. Whether it's a just worded or unjust worded, not to be controlled by anybody else. No. On the live on the employees level and on the organization level. Number six, using to open dome policy to empower society. Remember that society is making you. Society is giving you the money. Society is supporting you. Society is all without it, we cannot function. So the poor people on one side and society behind them. We have to open the door to any individual in the society to come closer and to ask questions and be a part of us and to empower our local society. Accountability and the other thing should be independent internally and externally. Accountability and other thing should be independent internally and externally. Should have nothing to hide. Should have nothing to hide. Should have nothing to hide. Following the maintain standards and principles, particularly transparency, accountability, impartiality, neutrality, and others. Others. We you know all this. We've been saying this for years. For years. For years. For years. Establishing the principles of building partnership with relevant organizations. Let me tell you clearly, nowadays, because of the enormity and the size and of, of the problems and the conflict affecting humanity, no organization can do it alone. Even if you are if you are one billion dollar organization, if you are two billion dollar organization, if you are three billion dollar organization, no way. You have to create partnership with the local community and partnership with the international community. Your money cannot solve a problem in one state in the country because it might be specialized in water, some other in health, some other in housing, some other in uh, empowerment of, of women and young people, someone in uh, in uh, livelihood and and because we have to come together. This is what how this is how we learned when we used to manage the camps of the United Nations in in in. Uh, in Pakistan, in Baluchistan, in 2001 and 2002. There's somebody managing the camp, somebody, some organization managing the camp, some organization is uh, responsible for water supply, food supply, medicine and health, uh, food distribution, education, and, 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 and. And with those six or seven organizations inside the camp, a camp, about 10,000 and 20,000 people. They have coordination committee with actually the organization was in charge of the management or the camp management. So six or seven organizations, big ones, it's not small ones, big ones, were actually managing a camp of 20,000 or 15,000 people. Next, please. Coming back to the pyramid or to the uh, triangle. Let me say it again. I'm not against anybody having an organization. But please, please come to Don't be, don't infiltrate to control. Don't choose self, the organization will collapse. We have no value, it will have no credibility, it will not integrity. That's wrong. This is the devil's act. Because we need the organization to last as long as we can, and we need more and more and more and more and more organization to emerge. Because of the emerging or the growing number of catastrophe, natural disasters, 
and conflict and rising numbers of the displaced, internally displaced people and the refugees. May Allah bless you, all of you. Thank you very much for uh, being patient with me for over nearly, I can't remember how long it is, but actually it is very important actually to try to protect the sector in a very unjust form. Trying to protect the sector in a very unjust, by a very unjust, dubious political figures. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.